Hello and good afternoon. I'm Ashley with Winging It with Ash. Welcome to my channel. I am an American who recently has moved to the UK, Wales specifically. And there are some assumptions that I made before coming here that I thought that I'd share with you guys uh, specifically about grocery shopping or yeah, getting groceries here in the UK. I assumed that it would be really similar to what I did in the US but I have had to make some adjustments here and I've had to learn some new words. I didn't know what things would cost. So today, that's what I'm gonna share with you. My experience here grocery shopping, the adjustments, and yeah, grocery shopping in the UK, what it's like. One of the first adjustments that I've had to make while here in the UK is I don't have a car and that's something in the US if I want to do a big shop it made it easier to put all my groceries in my car and take them home but here I can only do small shops because I can only carry or I need to make sure that I can carry everything that I have. Um, so something that I have adjusted to is ordering online. Which here in the UK, it's very common and they make it super easy. And there are multiple grocery stores that, grocery stores, grocery stores, or what do you call them here? Nobody calls them grocery stores, I just call them that. Markets? I don't know. <laughs> there are lots of different places that you can order groceries from. The first place that I ordered from is called Waitrose. It's a super fancy, nice grocery store, but most people know it as being a more expensive grocery store, but their products are awesome. Um, the grocery store that I now commonly um, shop from is Morrison's, but you can also do Tesco, you can do co-op. Um, even my small local grocery store has an app that you can use to order groceries on. Although when I first came here, I used that app and they only have a very small percentage of what's available at the store on the app. So it's not ideal, but they are faster. A harder part with ordering groceries is that if it's a more popular grocery store, it does take them a few days to get it to you. I ordered groceries well, on Tuesday and my delivery isn't even set till Friday. So you have to kind of plan ahead and know that you're gonna have a few days in between your shop and make sure that you have some groceries in the fridge, which is exactly what I failed on doing this time. <laughs> so I have to go to the grocery store today to get some things for lunch and dinner for the next couple days. Another adjustment that I have made is doing meal planning. So when I do do my big shop, I make sure that I get enough items and things that I need for the following two weeks. To do this, I make little lists and go through my list and do it on the shopping site. I did not start doing this until a little later, which this makes my shopping a lot quicker, but as an American and not knowing what's available, not knowing what things are called, it takes a lot of time. I think my first shop online took me maybe three hours, quite a bit of time to shop. That's not like normal. <laughs> for a normal thing like grocery shopping. I'm on my way to the grocery store, but I thought I'd bring up a few other things that make it a little more difficult as an American uh, to specifically grocery shop online. The names of things are different here. It doesn't matter how many times I put cilantro in the search bar, it's not gonna find it. Here they call cilantro coriander. If you want an eggplant, you need to look up aubergine, which I don't even know how to spell, to be honest. <laughs> or not a cucumber, a zucchini is a courgette. Another thing is the form of measurement here. As an American, when I'm ordering online, I look at the milliliters of something and I have no idea how much that is. I'd have to go into my kitchen and find like the measuring thing to be able to tell how much that is. I can't tell you how many times I've ordered something like sour cream that I think that it's going to be a big little, a big thing, but then it comes as this like tiny little thing that I didn't even know they sold was like, they sell these itsy bitsy things here. Like the milks are so cute, but if you're not paying attention, you could easily order something that is either way bigger than you expected or way smaller than you expected because I just need to learn how to do the measurements here. It's completely different. I'm just about there. Masks are still required for grocery stores here, so this is hard to do with one hand. <laughs> I'm gonna mask up and go inside and get some groceries. Okay, I'm at my local grocery store. It's a Philco, and they're pretty good prices here, actually. I think cheaper than you would find co-op. 
one of my very favorite sections here at the grocery store is the base goods and they have it conveniently put at the very front of the store so all I have to do is walk in and all my weaknesses are right there. Mr. Kipling has become quickly one of my favorites. Uh, the black currant is delicious but these cherry bagels are amazing. Definitely my fave. Yogurts, lots of different kinds of yogurt, all different prices. Greek style is definitely my favorite, but I've definitely fallen in love with the lemon yogurt. Um, lemon curd yogurt is amazing and one of my favorites. 79p, it's a good little breakfast. There's tons of juice options, but I have noticed that there isn't any grape juice option, at least in the cold section, which is really interesting because grape is common in the US. I love all the dip options they have here from tzatziki to salsa to lots of different types of hummus, all really affordable and delicious on a lot of different things like wraps. Um, see like lemon coriander. As an American, you would have no idea what that is, but uh, lemon and cilantro, which sounds absolutely delicious. This is what I'm talking about when I was talking about little size things. These milks are so cute. I definitely need some jam for myself. We're all out. Something that's different as an American is bacon. It is not the same type of bacon, although they do have The bacon I'm used to available, you can also get this bacon, which is, this is more common. Am I being sneaky or do people know what I'm doing? I have no idea. So awkward. Oh my gosh. Look at this mustard. How cute is that? It's like in a little pint jar. <laughs> in the US, eggs you can find in the refrigerator section along with the milk in different areas, but here in the UK, the eggs are next to all the baking supplies. When I first came here, I had no idea where to find the eggs. I couldn't find them anywhere, actually, so I had to look around the whole store before I found them. They're not refrigerated here because the eggs um, don't get washed like they do in the U.S., where the eggs in the U.S., they have to be refrigerated. Here, they don't, even though when I take them home, I still refrigerate them. <laughs> I guess out of habit. Do you refrigerate your eggs? If you're from the UK, let me know in the comments below. Do you refrigerate your eggs when you bring them home? Because I have no idea if that's a normal thing or if I'm just doing it because it's out of habit. Also, you can get packs of six eggs. These are so cute. Another thing that's tiny here in the UK that you can get. I think, can you get this in the US? Maybe, but it's the first place I've seen it. Six little eggs in a carton. A half dozen, what? something that really stumped me when I came to the UK originally was bicarbonated soda. I had no idea that this was baking soda when I first came here. I was looking everywhere for baking soda and I had to look online to figure out that bicarbonated soda is the same exact thing as baking soda. <laughs> and the other one I couldn't figure out was corn flour. We call it corn meal in the US. I could not find corn meal anywhere uh, until I figured out that corn flour was the same thing. I love baking. So I learned another lesson when it comes to baking. Um, normally I use plain flour, which is pretty much the only flour that I use in the US when baking. But here in the UK, they have something called self-rising flour, which already has the ingredients in it to help the bread, cake, uh, cookies that you're going to make rise on their own. So it must already have like the baking powder and baking soda in it but I rarely use this because I use American recipes for most things. And uh, that's what this is good for. So don't make the mistake of getting self-rising flour when your recipe calls for plain flour. It will make a huge difference when baking. A really funny mistake that I made when I first got here was ordering egg noodles. I typed it in, egg noodle, just like what I thought. But in America, tagliatelle is more like an egg noodle than what I received was these then Asian noodles. <laughs> um, I call everything noodles as an American, but I guess that's not right. This is pasta. These are noodles. Don't make the same mistake I did, because I, I guess people uh, people get mad about it. So if you get upset when people call noodles pasta, 
let me know in the comments below. One thing that's really done right here in the UK are the cheeses. There are so many amazing options for cheeses. Ugh, look at them all. And pies have become quickly one of my favorite things to eat. Not healthy, but super duper delicious. They're all savory pies too. In the US, we have a lot of sweet pies, but the option of savory pies is very minimal from where I am. In the grocery store, you also have options of buying household items like paint or light bulbs. Um, there are all these little household goods that you can get here at my specific grocery store. Um, not all of them have these options, I don't think, but pretty handy that we do here in our little shop in our town. Something you wouldn't find in the US is this whole freezer section right here. Yorkshire puddings. Now, I've heard that these are very hard to make. I made them, but it seems most people buy Yorkshire puddings um, from the grocery store and just heat them up. But these are Yorkshire puddings. These are Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> Definitely something that people have very often here are these Yorkshire puddings. Welcome to the ice cream section. This is one of my favorite places. Vianetta has quickly become a favorite. I get all these options. Oh yeah. Look at those. Nut butter cup. I had this one the other day. It is delicious. If you thought that was all the ice cream, this is a cupboard full of local ice cream, and then there's even more in this one. The frozen items here are amazing. I love the box where you can get as many as you want, and then there are instructions on how to bake all of them. But then these ones, smoked haddock and bacon, cottage pie, Cod morning? I don't even know what that is, but it sounds delicious. Another cute tiny thing, these sugar packs. How adorable is this? They sell these to go with your teas and coffees. I've literally never seen such a cute tiny sugar in my life, except for here in the UK. <laughs> so cute. A fruit in the UK that I am not used to, that we don't have in the US, for some reason it's banned in the US, is black currant. Like I said, the pies are delicious, they're black currant, but also I'm gonna get this jam. I've never tried it before, but the flavor of black currant is kind of a sweet and tart, and I really enjoy it. I, I wish that I could bring it back. Like, I feel like it's something that I could make millions on if I brought it back to the US, but I need to figure out why it's something that we're not allowed to have in the US. Did you know that the purple Skittle in Skittles here in the UK is black currant flavor and not grape flavor? In the US, it's grape flavor. That's all I ever knew. Crazy, except I don't like, I don't like the Skittle. I don't like the black currant Skittle, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no surprise that biscuits or cookies is a massive section of the grocery store. So many people use them for dunking and dipping into their tea or coffee. I have come to love this brand. These are my favorite biscuits here in the UK, but there are definitely a lot of really delicious kinds. And I've enjoyed trying as many as possible. All right, got my shop here 20 pounds later, 20 great British pounds later, and probably about 20 pounds <laughs> this bag later. Um, I got some things for um, cooking for the next couple days. I got some noodles and some veg. I'm um, gonna make a stir fry uh, with this delicious sauce. Definitely got some of these pies. Can't miss out on those. And then, um, some more veggies. I'm gonna make soup and um, a Caesar salads with chicken tonight, which I'm really looking forward to. But thanks so much for going to the grocery store with me. I'm glad that I was able to share. Another thing as an American um, is that when using a credit card or when using uh, sometimes even debit cards, you have to sign 
and a lot of times they don't even have um, a pen because they're not used to it. All the cards here are e either tap to pay or um, they use a pen for those cards. So um, signing a check is not a common thing here and kind of a thing of the past. I don't know why we still do it in the US, but something that I always have to do when I go to the grocery store. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm glad that I could share just a normal part of my life, take you along with me. If you have any other suggestions of regular things that you are interested in seeing, how they are in the UK, let me know in the comments below. I will see you in the next video. Bye. I got dinner to cook. I'll put these groceries away. Bye.